So uh, what is the idea of your book, Michael Schur, How to Be Perfect, and uh, what you came up with it right So. Here? This, Very good place looking cover. Yes, as well. it is. Right. Yeah. Um, so the, it came out of the the show, the good place. I w- got to the end of that show, and I had spent five years or so reading all this moral philosophy and all these theories of ethics, and then talking about them with very smart people and funny people, and taking all these ideas that are very dense and frankly pretty boring in their original forms, and figuring out how to put them into the mouths of people like Ted Danson and Kristen Bell, and make them funny and palatable. And I just kind of felt like I wanted to like collect it all in one place. Right. Like, and, and I found the understanding of these theories to be very helpful in my own life. Like, I, like at least now when I screw up, if I blow something, mm-hmm. I at least know why. Like that, which is a very comforting thing. It's like, oh, here's what I did that was wrong here. Mm-hmm. And I felt like a lot of people might enjoy knowing theories of ethics if they didn't have to struggle through an 18th century German text that nobody really wants to read. So I decided to just try to make a book that was like, I'm we're at dinner and you ask me like, Hey, what's, what are these theories of ethics about? And I am talking to you like a normal person instead of an 18th century German philosopher. And so, uh, questions like what, um, that, that you're asking to, I have a couple right here. Can I still enjoy great art if it was created by terrible people? That's a good one. That was the hardest chapter to write by far. Right. I mean, that's that to me is like, that's a sports fan question at its heart, right? Because <laughs> you, if you're a sports fan, you are immediately morally compromised. Your team, your owner stinks and has done terrible things. <laughs> your, the players uh, have done terrible things. The league has done terrible. Like if you're a football fan, which I know you are. Yes, I am, I am, Michael. Too, yeah. Like, it, right. like no, the, the number of like moral quandaries you're facing every time Sunday rolls around and you turn on the game are endless. Like right. it, and, and the, from the league itself to the ownership, I mean, Jerry Jones just very quietly paid some cheerleaders two and a half million dollars so that they wouldn't sue him because one of the if team officials was peeping at them like like a old timey pervert through some keyhole or like taking videos of them in the locker. I mean, this is horrifying. And that's far from the only scandal the Cowboys have faced. And Jerry Jones basically runs the league and you can go on and on and on. Right. So every time you have this thing that you love and you tune in to watch it, mm-hmm. you can't help. I think, but also have buzzing in the back of your head. Like, is this okay? And not to mention the fact the game itself is so violent and so many guys have been hurt and their lives have been ruined. And we just kind of try to forget it. We so put what's, blinders on. What's the answer then? The so, answer is yes, you can. Well, then there's also, just to complete the thought, there are also directors and actors and, and artists and whoever, celebrities that we love and that are mean a lot to us. Like I talk about Woody Allen. Woody Allen was key for me mm-hmm. in terms of my own development as a comedy writer. He made me want to be a comedy writer. And then you grow up and you learn some really unpleasant things about Woody Allen and you start to look at his work differently. So the thing I say in the book, and it's a fairly long argument, is the only mistake I think you can really make is trying to actually trying to separate these two things. It's trying to either ignore the problems that these people have created, or in t- if they really mean something to you, mm-hmm. cutting them out of your life entirely, because it's, that's how we develop as people, as we learn about this comedian and this athlete means something to us, and we share experiences. I, wa- I watched you know, football games with my son when he was just learning about sports, and those memories are meaningful to me. So you just kind of have to keep these two ideas in your head at the same time. Like, this thing is important to me, and also it's problematic. And, and dividing them is, is unnatural and I think a problematic thing. And it's, uh, that's why it's so difficult to come up with the answer in a way. And that's why the T is uh, off, that's right. off on the side here for how to, <laughs> that's how to be perfect. And then, oh, there's a T right oh, there's there. There's a T over there. Right yeah. there. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.